Hey, it's Amanda, um, and I just wanted to get on here for a few minutes and talk about a subject um, that is really relevant to many, many people, but sometimes the subject is taboo and folks don't want to discuss it. It's the issue of purity, the, um, you know, the topic of singleness and freedom and deliverance from shame. Now, um, without me getting too personal, um, people that follow me know my story. I'm a mom, I'm divorced, I'm co-parenting, and, um, you know, so, I mean, I made a decision that I'm going to, you know, seek God in certain areas of my life, and one of these areas is the area of, you know, trying to seek Him, even in my flesh, even in my mindset, even in those attitudes um, and opinions that I've had from the past, just really shifting, you know, setting another standard, not thinking I'm holier than thou, but saying there has to be a standard that is set. And so sometimes it's not really popular, especially if you're, you know, you grown with kids, you know, folk look at you like, you know, waiting, waiting for what? What is that? You know, so um, I kind of wanted to touch on this subject a little bit tonight. Um, it was tugging at me, and I want to be studying from Galatians 6. Actually, Galatians 5. I must have hit my phone. Bear with me a second. Um, and the one scripture that I really want to highlight is Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm going to say that again. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, this is not um, a preachy type of message, you know, to cause any type of shame or condemnation. You know, um, it's really quite the contrary. It's really freedom to know your reasons. You have to have a, a reason why you're doing what you're doing. And when you can focus on those reasons, then, you know, when adversity comes against you or when, you know, folk want to joke or whatever, you know, try to embarrass you, then you won't be embarrassed because you're standing on a clear-cut purpose. You have a vision, and you know what your reasons are. So um, I actually want to back up a little bit in Galatians 5 and take it from... I will say about verse 13, and you can go on, go back and, um, you know, review this. Um, Galatians 5, starting from verse 13, and I'm just going to read straight through to the end of this. Galatians 5. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lascivious, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And I'm not a theologian. This is my disclaimer. I'm not a theologian. You know, I'm just giving my testimony and, you know, speaking on this subject and sharing it with, you know, my friends and my network and family. Um, if this is relevant to you. You know, I know this may not be for everybody, but it's for somebody. You know, you may say, well, I'm married. This doesn't have anything to do with what I'm going through right now. Okay, that's fine. You may say, you know, whatever the case is. So tonight I want to just talk a few minutes about singleness, purity, and being delivered from shame. Number one, let's talk about shame for a second. You know, as believers and as children of God, the Lord doesn't want his people to be ashamed, you know. 
Um, he wants us to be able to walk in the freedom freedom of his love so you can share the love of Christ with others. So it's not about being preachy or thinking you're better or holier than thou. It's really, you know, I mean, when you're under a spirit of condemnation, which doesn't come from God, is rooted in fear. And in Timothy, the Lord tells us, I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And when you get a revelation of God's love and you realize that he hasn't given you um, a spirit of fear, then you can be delivered from it. Because many times folk want to beat you over the head. Well, you done messed up now, so what are you trying to do, you know? You trying to clean up your act now? You might as well just go all the way with it, you know? So um, there are some tools and tactics that, and strategies that you can actually practice, you know, principles that you can implement to help strengthen your, your spirit. You know, it doesn't matter how far you have fallen, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord our God shall be saved. You know, um, and this is something that you really need to be aware of, because if you're not aware of it, then you'll allow folk to beat you down, to, to try to put you to shame. Um, I mean, it's okay to have correction and rebuke, but we have the ministry of reconciliation. Um, in Romans 8, the Lord talks of, um, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. You don't have to be ashamed. God said his people will never be ashamed. What does this have to do with purity? What does this have to do with singleness? Well, you must first, you have to adjust your mindset, readjust your mindset. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you go into any situation or circumstance with a faulty way of thinking, then it's going to really affect your behavior, your decision-making process, you know, how you interact with people, how you engage in different situations. Um, you know, you have to set a standard there. And that's where it all boils down to. How are you thinking? What things are you meditating on? You know, I'm, anybody can tell you I love music, but, you know, it's just certain things that I'm, um, I can't really meditate on. It's not like I'm going to be condemned to hell if I listen to this song or anything. It just, you know, it can trigger certain memories. So, um, you know, even though we are in the spirit and we're in the world but not of the world, we still have this flesh. We still have this humanly nature, you know. So you can really condition yourself not to become a robot but to say, okay, if I know certain things trigger me, then I'm going to rear away from these things, you know, and it will strengthen you and build you up. So when you do get an environment – you know, where there may be temptation lurking, then, you know, the Lord will give you a way of escape if you want one. 